hey guys this is magenta welcome back to my youtube channel okay so today um i had a special request from a client she showed me a picture of some nails that uh cardi b had got done a few weeks ago it was a full bling set it was it was like a bling ombre um the bling transition from one color to the next I think it was like a three color ombre. I think it was like yellow, green, and blue. Um, these were her birthday nails and she specifically wanted her rhinestones to be three different shades of purple instead. So uh, we talked about what she wanted, I think at her last appointment. And man, do I have a story for y'all. But anyways, um, right here, I am just uh, cutting the nail tips, making sure they're all the same length, and I'm just uh, shaving them up. Usually, she would do like a nice uh, tapered square, but since we were going for a full uh, rhinestone look, I suggested to her that we do more so of a, a narrow, a narrower coffin. Because when you get to adding all those rhinestones, they do make the nails look a lot more bulky. Even, you know, even if you do thin out the nail. So I'm just going ahead and I'm cutting the excess off the sides of the nails. And I'm sorry, y'all, I'm out of frame just for a little while. I'll be back to frame in a minute. So just keep on watching. So yeah, I'm just cutting the excess off the side of the nail. Doing this saves uh, time when it comes to fouling. Um, so go ahead and just get you a nice pair of straight, straight edge scissors and, and cut your time down by um, cutting the sides of the nail first. There we go, back in frame. So I'm just shaping the nails, getting them how I like. Um, if you are interested in a shaping tutorial of how I shape, you know, my nail tips, I'll go ahead and, you know, make that soon and get that posted for you all. Also, I'll also drop the link of the nail tips that I use. I love these nail tips. They are, they're not too thick, but they are sturdy. Um, they are strong enough to foul without like bending and breaking. I've used a lot of different tips and not they are all, you know, they not created equal. So these right here, I would definitely, definitely recommend. So anyways, so yes, at my client's last appointment, matter of fact, you all saw her nails. Those were the um, lime green nails that I did with the, um, what was it? I drew the Powerpuff Girls on her nails. She had told me at that appointment exactly what she wanted done. And I told her that I have all the rhinestones for her or whatnot. So when she got to her appointment two weeks later, <laughs> I forgot to get the rhinestones. I forgot to order them. Me and my uh, husband had went out of town the week prior and it just slipped my mind. So when she got there, I'm like, oh shit, what am I going to do? So I thought that she would just, you know, be like understanding. <laughs> uh, was I wrong? She damn near had a nervous breakdown. Um, She was about to cry. I mean, her eyes got watery. She like, oh my God, my pants already didn't get messed up. I guess she had ordered some pants from Burberry and they came too big. And basically, she said everything that could go wrong would go wrong. So I had to, you know, I didn't want my client to be upset. And I know this is something that she really wanted because we had discussed this. So really, it was my fault. 
So she needed to have her prior set soaked off. So I had to think quick. So I said, you know what? It's no big deal. I can run to Michael's because Michael sell, sells the Swarovski um, rhinestones. I said, what I'll do is I will, um, you know, I'm going to drill off your acrylic. We're going to lay it down real thin. And while you're soaking, I'm going to run to Michael's and I'm going to get the rhinestones. I could not, I couldn't let her, no, I could not let her be upset with me. So we, we came up with that and I ran to the store. I got all the rhinestones that she wanted, came back, drilled off her um, previous set, got everything soaked off and here we are right now. That's why if you look at her finger right there, she still has like residue from the soak off. It was just so fun. Well, not funny, but <laughs> it was just, I was tickled a little bit because she was really about to break down and cry because of these dogs on rhinestones and I just couldn't have that happen. But she was pleased. The set came out amazing. So make sure you finish watching so you can see what these nails look like when I was finished with them. So after I'm done filing the shaping, I do like to turn their hand um, around, you know, just to make sure that they are all you know shaped the same way and that the tips of them are straight because sometimes if you file them with their hand the other like this way right here they'll look straight from one angle but you'll turn them around and the tips will be crooked so i do not always blend out my tips but like i said these are a little thicker than normal tips because they are extra long so i do like to um blend these out and again, I got out of frame again. She keeps moving so close to me, her arm. So I have to either keep moving the camera back or keep um, pushing her hand back. So we'll be back in frame soon. There we go. So yeah, I, I blend these out just, just so everything could be seamless. Okay, so once we have everything blended out, I prime her nails. Um, I use um, a no lift primer on her natural nail bed. Uh, make sure that it's all dry before I get to uh, adhering the acrylic. Anytime I use colored acrylic, I always put down a clear base. Um, it's just something that I prefer to do. So just grab a real thin bead of clear acrylic, lay it on the natural nail to where the nail tip meets. And to, for me, it's just like added security, just, just to ensure that, you know, my client's nails won't lift. Now this is optional, you don't have to do it. Um, I know a lot of acrylic systems are strong enough to hold, but I still, the only time I do not put a clear base down is if I'm using, of course, clear acrylic or if I'm using um, like nudes. Like if I'm using like a Valentino or Mia Secret, you know, those brand of nudes, I will not put a clear base down. Okay, so for this set, uh, even though we're doing all rhinestones, I wanted to make sure that the background of the nail has some sparkle to it. Um, I did not want to use polish, so I figured it would be quicker and easier for me to use a glitter acrylic instead. Again, when you're using like um, a gel polish, sometimes it does make the nail bulky and I wanted to keep this nail as thin and slender as possible because adding all those rhinestones it will uh, begin to bulk the nail out. Okay 
when I'm doing my um, my first layer of acrylic, I don't focus on building the apex right now. Uh, my only focus is basically just to get the color on the nail, make sure the whole tip is full. Um, so this, this first layer is very, very thin. I just get one bead and I make sure it, it is big enough for the whole tip. And then I make, and then my next beads, you know, cover the, the bottom portion of the nail bed. But when you all have clients, especially you all have, when you all have clients who are like repeat clients, um, it is okay, you know, to go above and beyond for them. I didn't, I mean, I felt like she has come to me enough for me to, it was, it was fine. I ran to the store, I made sure she was happy. You know, some of, some of us, we have attitude like, well, if I ain't got it, they just not gonna get it. No, we're not doing that over here. Like, I need my repeat clients to keep coming back. So my focus is to make sure they are happy. She was happy and I know that she will be returning. I don't know if y'all y'all, but this glitter is popping right now. Like she didn't even have to use the rhinestones and this set would have been cute just how it is right now. Excuse my paper towel guys, but if you've ever worked with glitter or acrylic, you know that that stuff is messy. I think I had glitter in my brush for days after this set. So if you have a favorite glitter or acrylic that you like to use, Make sure you comment down below so I can try out some new brands. You know, see how it works for me. Right now, this one is my favorite. This one right here is by Glam and Glitz. I forget the um the name of it. I'll try to have it listed in the, the, the description box. But yeah, this one right here is by Glam and Glitz, and it is my all-time favorite. Anytime. I'm doing a bling set. I try to use this as my base. It's pigmented, um, it's, it's bright, it's glittery. I don't know, and it's just the perfect consistency. I don't know what happened right there. <laughs> I think I, I don't know, I think I picked up a, a clump of acrylic right there and messed my ball up. So I had to piece it back together. And that's another thing. If everything, if you can't always get your, your beads right, don't panic. You know, everything could be fixed. It could be drilled and filed back into place. So do not panic if... You cannot get your beads right every single time. Okay, so this right here is where I actually built the structure of the nails. Like I said before, the glitter was just a very thin layer and that was just to get the color onto the nail. Now, right now I am capping my nail in uh, clear acrylic. 
So right here, I'm going to use a three ball method. Um, I'm going to make sure I build my apex because like I said, these nails are long. So you got to make sure they have structure. The way I build my apex is to stack backwards. I know a lot of people start at the cuticle area and work their way um, down. Me, I start at the tip of the nail and I work my way back. Um, and that's just what works for me. So again, I drop my first ball uh, towards the cute, towards the the free edge, I should say, the free edge of the nail, and then I work my way back, basically stacking the next bead onto the bead that was laid prior. And for me, that builds me a nice apex where it's not too big, not too bulky. It's just like a nice gradual change. Um. When it comes to laying acrylic, you need to let gravity be your friend. Make sure you make that nail go down. Put your client's nail down and just let gravity pull the acrylic down for you. Because naturally, it's just going to slide. You just control the sides of the, um, of the nail, you know, making sure the acrylic don't spill. And if you could do that, you know, it'll make it easier for you when it's time for you to, um, to file and buff you have a whole lot less filing and buffing to do a lot of people struggle with that cuticle area when it comes to um laying their acrylic a lot of people like flood the cuticle or put too much but if you put that nail down when you put your bead close to the cuticle area gravity will like naturally pull the acrylic away from the cuticle area. So try to work with your client's nail facing downward. When you're building your nail, um, make sure you're taking your client's hand and you're you're looking at the nail from different angles. Like instead of just looking at it from the top angle, like like we're looking at it right now, turn their hand to the side and look at it from a different way. Because when you turn it to the side, you can see dips or humps that are in the nail that you cannot always see from the top view. So if you just take the time to just lift their hand up and turn their nail to the side, you can fill in any gaps or spaces or any, you know, what like, I'm trying to think of how to say it. Any like areas that enough acrylic is, is not at, you know, just add some more acrylic to those spots. Because if you just look at the nail straight forward, you can miss that and then make the, the nail appear uh, uneven. See, it's like I'm always picking up her hand. I'm always looking at it from a different angle and a different, a different way, so I can see any, um, any mistakes that I could have made with the acrylic. I want to make sure my, um, my foundation is smooth. That way, at the end, I do not have a lot of drilling to do.
see right there, I had a nice little space that needed to be filled in. So I just picked up a small bead, a very small bead of acrylic, and I blended it out. Blended it up and blended it down. That way I could fill in that gap. All right, so even though we shaped the nails uh, in the beginning, we shaped the tips, and I'll, again, I'll be back in frame soon, don't worry. But in, even though we uh, pre-shaped our tips, after laying the acrylic, sometimes you can lose a little bit of the shape. So I like to go back in and I like to uh, reshape the nails. I don't spend a lot of time. I just make sure that I go back and just crisp up those edges, get any acrylic that probably spilled to the side. And then I do slightly go over the nail with my hand file just to make sure that there are no, um, no uneven portions of the nail. Make sure when you file on the nail that you get your hand file in that area right next to the um, the side wall. Uh, be careful, you know, with these files. I'm using the 8080 grit. So be careful when you get to that side wall area of the nail because you can cut your client. It has happened before. So right here, you have to be very, very careful next to their skin. But at the same time, if you want that crisp shape, you know, you got to get up in there so practice take your time it looks like i'm going fast but the video is slightly sped up so i'm really not moving as fast as it appears but i do like to go in with my hand file in that area just to make sure that those side walls are straight because that does make the uh to me it makes the nail appear more flattering and when you hand file the nail opposed to using your drill it just, I don't know, it just makes the nail look more crisp. Like, and it the hand file gonna tell you if there's any lumps and bumps because if you go across your nail and you foul and you see that it's an area on the nail that wasn't fouled when you brush that foul across, that means it's a, it's a dent right there or it's a lump. So you need to go ahead and foul that out. So I like to do this opposed to using my hand foul and that way, when it's time to use my hand file, all I gotta do is, you know, buff these surface scratches out from this 8080 grit and keep it moving. There we go, look at that. Bring that baby back to life. Make sure it's all straight and even. Again, I turn my client's hand around. I make sure that the tips of the nail are straight across. And then once I get it how I like it, everything else is done with my uh, carbide bit. Be careful when it comes to using your carbide bits, okay? Go slow when it comes to that cuticle area. Um, you wanna make sure that cuticle is flush. You wanna make sure the acrylic at the cuticle area is flush with no acrylic left on the skin. I cannot stress this enough. Take your time and just go over that area because that's what causes lifting. If you see that you have acrylic on your client's cuticle area guarantee i guarantee those nails will lift in a certain amount of days is it, i've been doing nails a long time and i've seen it happen it didn't happen with me so i'm just i'm not telling y'all nothing i don't do myself So I just like to take my time. I like to go over this area constantly, turning the nail, you know, turning the finger to the side, moving her finger as I drill. 
And then once I'm done with that cuticle area, I just take my carbide bit and I just, you know, I run it over the entire surface of the nail. And this is not to debulk it. This is really to just get rid of those surface scratches that were left behind uh, by my hand file. So as you can see, I'm going around the cuticle area and then I'm just knocking off those surface scratches with my carbide bit just to make the nail back smooth again. Okay, so once the nails are filed, shaped, I did buff, I buffed off camera. Um, I like to go in, well in this case, since I'm doing a full bling, I like to go in with a base coat instead of a top coat. Um, it's just a personal preference. That's just what I like to do. I feel like the top coats are, they are slick. You know, once, once they are cured, they are very slick and I use Mia's Secret um, resin, and I feel like it makes the nail, it makes the um, resin slide. It doesn't dry fast. I don't know. It's just, it's just. I don't know how to explain it. I put the dog on gel resin on there, and the rhinestones get to sliding all over the place. So instead of using the top coat, I like to use a base coat because I need that glitter to pop now before I put the rhinestones on because I can't go back and make the glitter pop. Uh, once the rhinestones are on because it's not gonna be no space so yeah once I cured it I cure it for um, 60 to 90 seconds and then I go through with some alcohol and I wipe off that sticky residue because base coat does leave an uh, inhibition layer that you need to wipe away <laughs> they look fine, okay? Look at that. Look at that. She could have left them just like that. And then would have been some, some bomb birthday nails. But, you know, she like what she like. But that right there, yes. I want them on my fingers. Right here, I'm probably taking a video of this with my other phone. <laughs> That's why it's in front of the camera so long. Have to get a couple pictures before the rhinestones so I could post them on my social media. Um, follow me on social media, um, Instagram, Magenta Nailed It, just like you see it on my YouTube channel, Magenta Nailed It. So I had already did the first nail before I realized that I was not recording. But um, if you can see, every nail is going to be done the same. Um, I'm using 100% genuine Sawaski, Sawaski, however you put Sawaski, rhinestones or whatnot. And I'm just using a few um, variations of purple. This is what she asked for. Uh, so I'm just going to show me blinking out one nail because all the other nails are done the exact same way. Again, I'm using the um, Mia Secret resin, and then once I have the entire nail complete, I do spray it with the um, Mia Secret, uh, what is it, the Mia Secret Activator Spray. I think that's what it's called. Um, that's just basically to freeze, freeze that glue from moving any further, because once I'm done, I want those rhinestones to stay in place. So I do spray it, and then I keep it moving to the next 
all right guys so that's it for this nail tutorial I thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all enjoy watching it as much as I enjoy doing it. I think this right here is like one of my all time favorite sets. Um, it came out so beautiful. I'm make sure I post some pictures um, at the end of this video. And please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting day, um, more content probably daily uploads, nail tutorials, nail hauls, vlogs, everything that you can think of with nails, I will be posting it. So stay tuned and subscribe and I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Ice me out. Ice me out. Ice me out.